Well, hi kids. It is Bob in one KPR, and uh, today we want to take a look at these uh, preamps uh, that we've been building. Um, there's uh, information on my uh, on both of my YouTube channels here. Uh, depending on which one you're watching now, uh, in one KPR, November one, Kilo Papa Romeo. It's my call sign channel. And this other one where we're venturing off into other aspects of the hobby uh, is Ham Radio Doctor. Ham Radio Doctor. So depending, you're on one or the other right now. So anyhow, uh, we've been building uh, dozens of these things. Uh, they're basically just RF preamps, nice and clean. The, the nice thing about them is that uh, they're simple. Uh, what we were striving for is uh, durability and um, the ability to not uh, create overload up there in the front end or, you know, inner mod in your receiver. Uh, so we uh, we have tried all kinds of things over the years. We're using FETs and uh, 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 Mimic chips. And uh, what else? Oh, video ICs, which work pretty well. But none of them seem to have the dynamic range and the intercept points that we wanted to, to get. Uh, just to have like a, a carefree, autonomous, standalone... Uh, whoop de doo Olympic model uh, <laughs> preamp. All right, quickly. Um, listen, the history of this is I, I, right now I've got about, I don't know, 12 or 14 people that want these. And what this video is about, guys, is, listen, if, if you can handle a soldering iron uh, without setting the house on fire or without burning your cat... Uh, why don't you just scrounge up the parts and, and, and put one together? Uh, save yourself a lot of money. Uh, you know, here's uh, here's materials and time. And uh, I don't want to sell these. I really don't. I want you to build them, enjoy them, have fun. Anyhow, here's the two versions we've been using. This, this one here was made to go inside a unit. It's double shielded because the unit, the pre-selector unit, is uh, in a steel case. Uh, but still, we uh, we put this in its own case, too. Uh, the outdoor ones uh, have a groove around here. Let me just put my tool. And they have a groove all around the perimeter with a silicone rubber O-ring. And then, of course, uh, the top goes down. Of course, they wouldn't have the, the vent holes in them. And... Uh, you know, they're plug-and-play. B and C inputs usually, sometimes SMAs. And on the front, we're giving them uh, a true RF gain, or an attenuator, actually, and a gain control from the amplifier. And you can see the nomenclature there, I guess. Uh, we're kind of, kind of focused. Uh, linear from 9 to 15 volts input, no problem. Very little current draw. You could run them from a little 9-volt battery if you wanted to. Um, this particular unit does not have uh, the input filtering for the DC line over here. Um, it will get added, I believe. And uh, we're going to put it down in uh, right over here. Right there. Um, and here's the same guy. It's meant to be a module inside of a unit, just like that one, but this one where they have front panel controls. And there you have it. Very simple. We're using, uh, uh, I can't focus on that. Anyhow, they're 500 ohm. Linear. Use linear controls. Um... Again, you'll be tired of hearing me say it if you've seen my other videos, but uh, yellow input, blue output. Stay with the retma codes. You can't go wrong. And if you're building for contracts, especially with government or commercial people, 
uh, they're impressed that you use the retina codes. They like that. Some of them actually insist on it. This particular guy, their spec called for uh, uh, lacquer sealing of uh, all the hardware. So as you can see, we're using glyptol or you know red electronic varnish, uh, which comes uh, even on the pots, which is. Uh, that there stuff, if you've been in electronics for any amount of time, you'll know what that stuff is. Uh, so same thing here, this thing will be double shielded and so on, and it's the same board. It's here, we'll put them together. Same board. Except this one has the pots on the case, and this one has them separate. All right. Um, like I said, try to, you know, it's, it, it, it's not a big deal. Get some perk board and uh, scrounge up the parts. It's not a big deal, guys. And build it. Don't ask me to sell you one. I don't want to. Um, here's... Uh, and you've seen this on the channels before. There's a schematic. Uh, what I have to put in these two units now, uh, these were built for testing, and actually I was going to put these filtering components external, but I think, you know, uh, on second thought, I think I'm going to build them in just for uh, general principles to keep everything united. But uh, I'm putting in a, an input uh, choke here to keep, the, uh, the VCC, the B-plus line, nice and clean uh, from RF. And uh, uh, we're going to do some bypassing, too. Here's uh, DC bypassing and RF bypass. So, you know, we've got this uh, low-pass thing to ground to keep everything nice and, uh, nice and clean RF-wise. Uh, did I say low-pass? I meant high-pass, didn't I? I think you caught me on that one. Um, if you want to, a screen grab of this thing. I think that should be good enough in focus. Uh, a lot of these are used in uh, uh, TV cable cable system amplifiers. Um, this is an adaptation of it. I mean, you can't you can't copyright or patent a circuit unless there's really something unique about it. This design has been around for a long time. So, uh, uh, there it is. Get some resistors. Try various transistors. I'm using 3904s. There are some cleaner, uh, uh, more linear, better dynamic range, band bandwidth gain uh, transistors you can play around with. But we've gone back to these. These are absolutely great. I'm using them down into uh, VLF at 10 and 20 kilohertz, guys. And out to 30 megs, most of the time up to 10 megs because they uh, they usually switch over to something else uh, for the higher end of the HF band. Uh, FETs or ICs are usually built in, but uh, you want to cover 10K out to 10 megs, this will do it. I've used this thing out into the FM uh, broadcast band, so no problem. Um, if you want to lay out a board, here's all of Bob's hard work. Laying out the uh, board. This is a four to one layout. The board's actually about an inch and a half square. But uh, there's the components as marked here by the RC and Q numbers. Okay. And here's the board if you want to lay one out. It's a pretty simple board, no oscillation problems and so on. What I've provided here on the input and the output is the ability to wire it with a pot, input pot, and the three for the output pot. Um, or if you don't want to use the pot wired to the board, you want to use it externally, you just put a jumper in where the J is, put a jumper in, and come in and out over here. And that way you can wire the pots outside or do whatever you want to do. If you want to fix 15 dB again, you just put the jumper in and no pot. And you're going to have 15 across the board. And then in your receiver, you can switch it in or out if you like. Uh, 
But this is the uh, component side view with the green showing the uh, circuit side and the parts layout. All right. If you want to do this on uh, perf board, try that. Let me get that all in there. Okay. You can screen grab that. And look how easy. Don't ask me to make one and spend money. I'm not going to do it. Uh, unless you're really needy, I'm not going to do it. And by the way, i got to tell you, all the ones that I've sold, I've made probably, and I'm not lying to you, anywhere from 3 to $10 profit. I usually lost money because the shipping rates are going up. Uh, so I, YouTube, YouTube listing, I am not selling anything. I'm not selling YouTube. All the YouTube police out there. There's the layout. You can do it that way. Now, when you've laid out the front of your uh, perf board, and you've got all these things stuck through the holes on the, on the perf board, all right, I'm going to turn this over, and here's what the back looks like, just so you don't get confused wiring it. You can go line for line here. This is a little... Uh, <laughs> Kind of like an amateurish thing to do, but what I did was I printed the uh, the component side, and because when you're working on the back of the board, it's very easy to get reversed in your head. So uh, you turn the board board over, and this is what all your wiring is going to look like. Really simple, right? All right, I've got this guy hooked up here right now. As you can see, the uh, let me turn this. You can see the little LED is lit. And I'm going to show you how nice with the linear gain pot here. I'm going to turn that and show you the... You've seen this before. Here we go. That's Unity. And the pot is at about the 10 o'clock position. 10 o'clock. Unity gain. I'm going to go down, down, down. We go down to dead air, dead short. Signal so short to go back up to Unity. I'm going to go about half scale with the pot. There you are. See the pointer pointing at 12. And let's continue on. All the way up to uh, plus 15 dB. I turn it back to Unity. I have that calibrated there. At minus 15 on the scale is unity. And there we are. Uh, input attenuator. I leave it wide open right now. Uh, but well, let me just show you. Let's go all full scale. And the attenuator is literally at max. Not max attenuation, but max RF green. And I'm turning it down, 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 down. It does what you would expect it to. It goes from zero to max. That's all it does. Very, very simple. It's like the gas pedal in your car. Either you're not moving or you're uh, speeding off looking for a ticket. So that's it. Um... All the emails, thank you so much, guys and gals, uh, for your comments and uh, uh, requests to buy these and uh, my videos and so on. Um, go back, grab these with your uh, print screen control or whatever. Pause the, uh, uh, pause the video. And do the, uh, what is that thing called? The clip tool? Clipping tool? Or snipping tool? Or some silly thing? I don't know. And, uh, and do that. Again, we're using real transistors. No FETs. No ICs. No mimics. They're all good. They all have their place. Um, but you want durability. And you want to be able to amplify... The signal from your antenna from a real strong broadcaster, like me, I've got a 3,500 water across the river here, and uh, I cannot saturate this thing. 
I could do enough gain that I overdrive the radio and create all kinds of uh, inner mod. Uh, but we're not going to hurt this. And of course, if you're smart, you'd look at my other videos and put some kind of protection up front just in case. Uh, the back-to-back -back, uh, diode pairs, and it maybe an in NE2, uh, neon tube. All that stuff's cheap. Pennies. We're talking about pennies here. Uh, the total value of this, if you bought all the parts from uh, some online suppliers, probably about three bucks. So, uh, get out your soldering iron. See? There's one that's even got my call sign on it. Get out your soldering iron and a piece of perf board and <laughs> build one. Have some fun. Let me know how you made out. Any problems? Eh, send me a note. We'll talk about it. Okay, went long again because I always do. Uh, everybody stay perfect. Stay CV19. Hope you got all your shots. Uh, and you're reuniting and uh, socializing with all your friends and family and so on. Uh, we love y'all, Bob, in one KPR. Bye-bye.